All right, welcome everybody, and thank you for joining us uh, tonight for this look into Florian. I am joined, uh, very excited to uh, introduce, and uh, very excited to be joined by two very accomplished gentlemen in the firefighters. All right, welcome everybody, and thank you for joining us. I will uh, start off by introducing uh, Deputy Chief John Riker from the Newark Fire Department. Chief Riker, how are you doing tonight? I'm well. Uh, thank you for having us, having me here tonight. Uh, it's been a, it's quite the honor to be part of this uh, 3 a.m. system and uh, uh, very excited to be part of Florian. Excellent. And also uh, another colleague of his that we also uh, are very excited to have be a part of, of tonight's uh, look into Florian is uh, Chief uh, Deputy Chief Mike Turpak from the Jersey City Fire Department. How are you doing tonight, Chief? Great, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invite. Uh, looking forward to spending some time tonight with you and John and talking about what I think is going to be uh, a game changer for the fire service. So thanks and great to be here. Welcome, welcome everybody. Yeah, well, thank you both for uh, taking some time out and uh, and spending it with us tonight. So greatly appreciate that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and kick off things here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to obviously, if you've been here before, you know that we like to take a walk through Florian. Uh, show some of its key features, uh, some of the operational value that it has in terms of the fire service. Um, but before we do that, I just want to make sure to say, uh, please don't forget to like and share the stream. Uh, every little bit helps get the word out. Really appreciate it. Uh, make sure that if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask whatsoever. We will address them, and the Chiefs will specifically address uh, some more of the operational questions uh, throughout the evening as well. So uh, we're going to run anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, once again, just want to make sure if you if you pop in and pop out, make sure that you uh, interact a little bit with us. Make sure you like the stream. we got a few already. Scott Kahn, thanks for liking the stream. Matt Bartlett, thanks for liking the stream. Appreciate it. Hopefully we'll bring some value to you and uh, explain to you guys just how, uh, how special Florian is and how it's going to kind of change the fire service uh, in the years to come. So uh, just to start out, what we'll do is we'll take a quick tour through Florian, okay? And uh, what I'm gonna point out is along the left-hand side, so what we have is our main screen here, okay? And this is our map screen. Um, along the left-hand side, we have what we call our menu panel. It allows us to uh, reach several different um, screens throughout Florian, your personnel, your incidents, your messages, your options, some, uh, some of the back-end things there. Uh, Rich Cooper, thanks for liking the stream, appreciate that. Along the right-hand side, we also have our what we call our accountability anchor. This is where uh, you're going to have uh, some of your uh, your roll up and uh, essentially some of the other teams and, and resources that are in the field. You'll be able to uh, see those here. And then down below we have what we call our tool tray, okay, which is where we house different annotations uh, and several different actions, so area, structure, and scribble, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and, and we're going to talk about some of the in route features of Florian. Okay, so what are those? Uh, well, we uh, we supply you with ETAs of some of the incoming apparatus, and we also give you AVL or automated vehicle uh, locationing location. Um, so, uh, Chief, uh, I'm going to start off with you, Chief Turpak. What what are some of the benefits that you uh, you can identify uh, in terms of understanding when your you know your personnel or resources are en route, and maybe some of their ETAs? Uh, you know, I think this is a great feature. I, I know we've talked about this before in some consult meetings and, you know, sitting down having a cup of coffee. I mean, uh, I think a lot of the officers out there will pretty much agree with me when I say this. It's always important to know, even as a company officer, let alone a chief officer, who is coming in and how far they are away from the incident. And I remember we were up in Boston doing some training and I brought this up to the Boston Chiefs and I said, the value of... Uh, not only for you, but for your company officers. If, let's say for argument's sake, I gave an example of, you know, I'd say Agent 33 is normally first due at a certain box or a certain address. But when all the companies acknowledge through the flooring system, and if you look on the, you know, the right-hand side and you see the ETAs as a company, and for some reason, Agent 33 is obviously much more minutes away, meaning they were out of their district or let's say they were coming from another incident, they were coming from the training division or from getting fuel or whatever it may be, 
the second do engine might see that reference that, you know, 33 is four minutes out. I am three minutes out. I'm going to be first do. 33 is not going to be first do. And how that can change responsibilities of who's doing what from the first engine to the second engine to the first ladder to the second ladder, just by looking at the right-hand side of the screen and looking at the ETA from when the company acknowledged until the company's arrival. I think, to me, that little math reference, if I could say that, you know, those numbers, ETA, I think that has a lot of value. I think it makes for more efficiency and effectiveness and obviously safety because who's taking the first line, who's doing water supply, who's got the front of the building with the ladder company. So, I was, I mean, I got excited when we saw the ETA feature pop into the flooring system. And I remember sharing it with the Boston Chiefs and some of the captains, and I think they agreed with me when we talked about it. I'm sure many of your listeners would as well. Yeah, so the, there's, you know, I think I think we all acknowledge there's a lot of there's a lot of value in ETA, and you know there are other systems that are tackling that. You know we can de- we can definitely acknowledge that, right? Um, so that that is a feature that is becoming almost commonplace in in the fire service. It's it's an expectation, really. Uh, so we do like to point out that we do cover that feature. Um, so if we're talking in a software sense, how does Florian display that ETA? Well, if you look along the right-hand side here, okay, and we get into our accountability anchor here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up uh, myself. Actually, I am logged in here, and you're going to see this uh, engine four. Under engine four, you have Brandon. You're going to see this ETA here. So that is in hours. So this is actually six hours and 24 minutes. So we're on scene, and the only reason why it's saying that uh, it's giving such a ridiculous... (laughs) A ridiculous uh, um, long ETA is because it's actually tracking my device here in Buffalo, New York. So for the, these purposes, we actually have this uh, this gorgeous church um, in downtown Boston, and and we'll get a look at that a little bit when we talk about the map features. But the ETA is displayed in the accountability anchor, so we can easily roll up or or expand or collapse any of this information, okay, to really clear the noise. Now, say if we want to focus on just the uh, the engine, we can expand all of them out. And now let's say, wh- where exactly are they? Okay, so we utilize what we call our focus feature. And just by clicking on any one of these resources under engine, now please ignore these. I know it says Ladder 36, Rescue 2, and so on. You, you can ignore those. Um, it really is about being able to assign them in their specific groups here. So let's say we, we click on, uh, you know, uh, Firefighter Bougiera here. I click on that and it's going to bring me directly to see where they are. So now we can see that not only are they en route, um, but they're about, you know, six, seven blocks away from the actual incident. If we look at the incident up at the top of our screen. So we see that here, that here's the incident that's, uh, you know, shown by that circle. But we now have a, a great understanding of, of some of those incoming apparatus. Now we can see they're on Mass Ave um, and they're probably going to make a right here. Uh, and, and travel down Washington Street just to get to the to the church. So uh, that's how it's displayed is the ETA here along the right. And what I'll do is I'll show you another example. So six hours and 24 minutes. If I click on that, it's actually going to bring us all the way to Buffalo, New York, uh, because that's tracking my device as we speak. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and unclick that, click this uh, address down here, and that's going to recenter us back here. So uh, as we talk about ETA and some of the map features, obviously that's very map centric. Um, one of the things we're really, really proud of is actually the uh, the different map views that we provide you with. Um, so how do we achieve those? Uh, we're going to open up our, our menu panel here and click on, click on the map icon. And you can see just here alone, we have two different map views. We have a terrain and we have a satellite view. So in our terrain view, we still give you a 3D representation of the building which is actually, it's, it's fairly accurate. So when I, when I go ahead and uh, I switch over to our satellite view, you're gonna see that. But it's very easy just to maneuver around the map and it's super fast. But it's also a touch screen. So if I use my hands here, I can actually zoom in, zoom out uh, and, and scroll, you know, kind of uh, orbit around the building. So let me go and do our, our satellite view here and we're gonna see, l- look at what a great picture that gives you. So not only are you able to uh, see kind of a representation of the building, but you can actually see the different roof pitches. So I'm actually gonna throw it over to to Chief Riker right now. Is there anything you wanna point out in regards to some of the operational value uh, or on scene 
Um, and I know that uh, Chief Chirpak's really the, the size-up guy, but I want to, Chief Riker, I want to give you a chance just to see if there's anything you'd like to point out in regards to what some of the value is of, uh, of being able to see that building in, in 3D satellite. Well, in, in 3D satellite, I mean, it's just fantastic. As you can see how clear the details are. And what you have to understand about this as well is that picture you're going to see that picture even if you pull up to that church at three o'clock in the morning on a rainy foggy night you're going to still see that as clear as you're seeing it right now and that satellite view allows you to zoom in and see details that you wouldn't normally see uh, from from the street you can look all around the building you can see the the backyards the rear alleys construction features light shafts, utilities, uh, if there was solar panels on a roof or a penthouse, any of these um, details would have a direct impact on your uh, strategy and tactical approach. So Chief Turpeg, anything you'd like to add to that while we're, while we're on the uh, 3D satellite view? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember when we were in uh, the you know 3 a.m.'s headquarters in Buffalo and we were prepping uh, to go to Boston, and, you know, we were scanning the city to pick a building, you know, to do as part of our demo. And, you know, I, I scrolled across this church and, you know, for architectural reasons, for whatever reasons you want to say, I'm kind of like a, a building construction buff. And I mean, you look at the features of the church, uh, you know, as John pointed out, I mean, they're so unique to many other buildings in the, in the city or or a suburban, or even a rural area. And this just jumped out of me. Go, we got to use this as our demo, just to talk about you know the the features of the mapping system that we have in Florida, because it's 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 like as if you were flying yourself over the building in a drone, and looking at you know the, the pictures, the you know the rose window, the vent window maybe over the gable, um, the accessibility in the front, rear, and back of the building. Maybe if there's an attached residence to the property, accessibility. On square footage, uh, I just, I just, I love this feature. In the church, I think the, the, the feature that your sh pictures that were shown here, Brandon, just show the value of you know the satellite view and how like, a wow factor. Like, oh my God, this is exactly what I'm going into. I'm three or four minutes out, and I can get all of this situational awareness in my head, into my computer, my head, so to speak, and you start to make some decisions or some anticipative decisions. Uh, before I'm there, just based on the uniqueness of the building, square footage, accessibility, exposure. So, yeah, I, I mean, I was blown away when the, uh, the Florian team uh, introduced this into the program. I said, wow, this is going to be a big selling point. I, mean, I know it is for me. I mean, size up situation awareness, I'm all, I'm all about that. And I think this exhibits that, really does. I got to agree with you, Mike. Uh, you take a look at that and just that image alone puts in your head if you pull up and you have any type of any type of fire or incident going there knowing what what you have because of these uh, photographs and these pictures you're not going to hesitate to uh, call for additional help right away get that second alarm started or those extra engines and trucks or the you know the resources that you need and um, you might not do that if you don't have that type of view uh, to prompt you with it so it's, no. it's really beneficial i mean it's outstanding and you know i've said this numerous times in a, in seminars and you know even having a cup of coffee with you know guys like yourself john and any other people i always say and there was this is an old quote and i think this is a great quote it's not my quote but i'm i'm going to state it and i'll give you the author there was a there's a quote from a book called firefighting principles and practices a gentleman by the name of william clark and i often talk about this quote in my seminars and he said in his book, and his quote was, the key to successful firefighting is anticipation. Now, if you think about that word anticipation, right, thinking ahead of things before things actually appear or thinking ahead of things before actually things actually occur. I mean, this here, uh, talking about being the anticipative side or the situational awareness side with this mapping system, and then I'll put some size up on top of that. I mean, it helps you forecast what you might need to do before you need to do it. So it's talk about having tools in the toolbox, man, anticipation. If this feature doesn't exhibit that, I don't know what does. I really don't. Mike, that's a great quote. I, I love it. 
And you know what? If we can just back up a moment and go back to the ETAs, hmm. you can work that in. You could work that into that as well. If you know that that second dude truck is going to be three or four minutes out, and you got fire blowing out of one window, and you know by you know by the time they get there, it's going to be out two or three windows. You know, by the time they get water up there or, or, or force that door, right. you're banging. You're gonna you're gonna call for help. Help. You're banging an additional alarm or getting an extra engine and truck on the road in anticipation based on on the information that Florian's given you. Absolutely. 100 percent. And then to your point, too, you can see like when you look at the mapping feature here I mean, let's say you're, you're getting a, a response of three engines and two ladders or four engines and two ladders. And let's say your ladder companies with the first two ladders, a 100 foot rear mount. And your second do ladder is a 95 foot tower ladder. You might want to move that tower ladder a little bit ahead into the system here or into the mapping here to say, take the front of the building, take the rose window or take the B side because you have access to all those windows on the B side in the event, you know, things go sideways. So, I mean, taking a look at the building before you get there, I mean, a no before you go. I mean, we could give a lot of different quotes here, but I mean, I think the pictures speak for themselves. I really do. Absolutely. Thanks for that. I appreciate the back and forth. I, like you guys are making my job easy. I get to just kind of sit back and let you guys chat about this stuff. <laughs> well, you know, Brandon, I, and John and I burnt out a lot of buildings in our career. So I think we've learned a few things during that time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, so, you know, the nice thing too, is that I, I know we've, we've, we've discussed some of these things before, and this isn't your first time obviously seeing the program um but one of the things we actually just added that that is you know takes us even a step further because let's let's admit okay so you got a really nice 3d representation of the building okay we can understand spatially the building okay we can understand kind of the size of the building uh just by using some uh some of these reference points around it okay like vehicles on the street uh, we can understand maybe how much hose we're going to stretch what's the length of hose that we're going to stretch across the street uh, those are all things that actually can be gained by this as well, additionally, right? Um, so just by using the, the, the car lengths, okay, I know here uh, I'm probably stretching 30, 40 feet of hose across that across the street, prob probably more. Um, so, uh, hey, Rich Cooper, thanks for sharing the stream. Appreciate that. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the like as well, Rich uh, McCory. Appreciate that. Keith McDermott, thanks for liking the stream. Uh, glad to see some interaction in here tonight. Appreciate that. Um, so we, you know, we also you know, take Brandon. Sure. Go you ahead. know, Brandon, you know, you're talking, you're talking about that with, with the street and all that as well. You know, you can see this ahead of time and you can anticipate. Can you imagine getting this alarm during a busy weekend afternoon? Mm -hmm. The traffic, you know, we yep. don't see any traffic. We, we see very little traffic in that picture as it is right at that moment. But you can imagine that traffic problems that you would occur. Uh, and you and you can figure that out for yourself based on based on those on those photos. So uh, just it's just a huge plus to have this type of a uh, type of view. So I'm just I'm just taking a note because that is that's really important. I want to touch on that actually when we get to scribbles. Um, that's really that's really, really great. Being able to uh, kind of delegate some things, maybe blocking off traffic uh, and whatnot. So. Um, also, uh, shout out to Shane Ferris. Thanks for liking the stream. Appreciate that. Um, so the 3d map, obviously this is, this is a big, this is a game changer, right? Uh, I don't think any other system out there is, uh, utilizing, you know, 3d in this way. Um, we also take it a step further and we give you what we call what's called street view. Okay. So now most people are familiar with this. They've used Google earth, Google maps, um, we, we actually enable that when you're in route. So if I click this little guy down here, look at this now. Look at the detail in this image. I'm, I'm literally able to sort of walk along the street, okay, um, and call out in a very detailed way some of the features of the building. Okay, we can zoom in, we can zoom out. Um, it just, it, it takes the three, the 3D is more of the aerial view, and now the street view really helps you understand the facade of the building. But the, I, I just get blown away by the quality of these photos. Look at this. So what are some of the things that you think, um, you know, are, are important that maybe Street View might help with? 
Well, these details that you that you're talking about here, you know, I mean, I know we're looking at a church, and but if we were looking at even another structure, you might see you might see gates and bars on the windows on, on the first floor. Roll down gates, bars over the windows, uh, you know, in a particular building. Uh, you might see awnings, signs, overhangs, things like uh, construction features like that that absolutely have an effect on the manpower needed to perform certain tasks. Um, my example would, to that would be if you have awnings and overhangs and you have to raise ground ladders uh, would be a very difficult thing. So to see that from the street view, uh, a, an incident commander can anticipate the problems that his companies would have and call for additional help. Get somebody, get somebody in the street rolling in on that. Absolutely. Anything to add chief Turpak? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at the difference between, uh, you know, the, the aerial or satellite view, you know, I, I always thought, and I could, I could be wrong here. Maybe the listeners can chime in or not. And the giant can tell me yeah or nay. When I look at the, at the overall the aerial view, the satellite view we had, to me, that's kind of like the view that the chief or the incident commander would love to see. You can see the surrounding properties. You can see the square footage of the building. You can see, you know, all the difficulties from the sky. When you go to street view, I think the street view has a value. I mean, it has value for everybody. Don't, don't let me, well, let me miss direct anybody but i think the street view has more value for the engine and ladder officer from the task perspective like john mentioned ago you know accessibility the stretches the, the what you can ladder what's going to be difficult for example you're gonna have to jump over in some of these pictures some landscaping to get some laddering in here and it, let's say it's not a church let's say it's a row of frames or it's a row of brownstones or brick tenements or uh, things that have some other challenges with it regarding accessibility. I think that street view, the engine and truck are going to gravitate towards quicker than the chief. And I think the chief loves the aerial. I think the engine and truck love the street. And again, when you here's my favorite word. Don't, don't laugh when I say this, guys. When you dovetail all this stuff together. <laughs> see, I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> hey, every, for everybody out there, every time I say dovetail, uh, everyone has to normally take a, like a drink, you know, whether it's a, a <laughs> beer or a cu cup of coffee but that's that's another story for another day but um but i think when you take these, these images and you dovetail them together obviously it gives you, you know, the lay of the land perfectly but i think again john correct me if i'm wrong i, I think you agree with me that street view with the engine and truck love that yeah, accessibility the width of the street you know hydrant locations which we'll get into shortly uh, i mean I mean, this is a win-win. I mean, again, another game changer. Another game changer. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, Mike. I I agree with you 100. percent I mean, just take a look at the the um, the fence that's going around there. So if, if we got if we got to get ground ladders uh, to the back of that building uh, because you can, you're not going to get your your truck back there with the fence, um, you know, you you could see it right then and there. You you, you know ahead of time. Um, you're, you're taking the aerial out of play maybe uh, on the D side of that building, and it, it's going to be some ground ladder work if if you need that. And you could see that just by looking at, at that picture. Yeah, and the same thing will go for the engine. Let's say the engine is seeing that they're coming in from a certain side of the building, and they see it's going to be a long and difficult stretch. They might be raiding or giving a face-to-face -to, -face to the second new engine to get two engines to stretch that initial line. You know, Why would they start and muscle one and then muscle a second one from a second engine? How about – this helps maybe pull resources to get certain objectives done. You know? And I think right. that's another, another big factor here based on what you Absolutely. Say. And, and, and you know, if you're going to have to do that, you're going to need more help. There you go. Right. Yeah. Prompts you for an additional engine and truck prompts you for, you know, start the second alarm and some things, things along that line. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I just love how we can kind of hop around here too. That's a nice thing too. Is you can just skip through the street so it's really uh user touch friendly we designed everything to work with most toshiba tough books and most mct solutions um and uh richard mccory here says he says this is the most vivid mapping feature i've ever seen so that's that's great we we really appreciate hearing things like that because we focus so much on the visual um you know to prepare the fire service when they're en route and to know that we're hitting that mark really means a lot. So I appreciate that, Rick. R really, really do. Um, one of the things I want to step out and I, and I want to focus on now is actually um, 
so some more of our resources, okay? So say, you know, if we're talking about en route, obviously, so let me let me just, you know, uh, make a, a statement right now about the two different views. We understand the satellite view. It's not very operational. Uh, it's very uh, heavy uh, in terms of uh, imagery, okay? And when you're on when you're on scene, you really want to clear the noise of the fire ground. So that's that's the purpose of of sort of the terrain view, is it still gives you this really nice 3D representation of the building, but you can see a lot more. Okay, so if we start exploding out some of our crews here, um, and these are all have deployment timers because they've been on on scene for longer than 20 minutes. So those are some of the things that we also give you is different pieces of automation. Okay, so I'm going to explode out some of these crews here. Um, say we've got say we've got the rescue down here. So let's say rescue is in route, okay, and we can see them. They're heading down Harrison. We want to s send them to a specific corner of the building, or maybe as a chief, or you know, we've identified something uh, like our chief said before in terms of the landscaping, and, and maybe there's a, a certain obstacle that they're going to have to kind of fight through. So we want to send them to a specific corner of the building. We can actually, uh, we can do that now. So we give the chiefs the ability to do that. So if you want to take these resources and say, let's send, uh, let's send the rescue. Okay. We get this nice little crosshairs here. And uh, this is actually GPS based. So we don't do this based on the, um, you know, house number or building number. We do this specific to the GPS coordinates. So you're going to see those along the right hand side here under under uh, the rescue. So a simple uh, minus is going to delete that that um, command and a plus is actually going to stick that. Now we see how the flag there populates. So now the rescue, they actually get a notification on their MCT that says, hey, we're going to hang a right uh, off of Harrison and they want us at this corner of the building. So you can get very detailed in some of your commands when your apparatus are still en route which is really nice. And it doesn't require you to be on scene as a chief. So maybe some, maybe there's a chief back, um, you know, at, uh, at division one or what have you. And they're just, uh, they're logged into Florian and they're, they're noticing some of the features of this building and they're sending specific uh, apparatus and personnel to where they think uh, they're going to be best suited to. Um, so anything either of you'd like to say in regards to that at all, the ability to send people to a specific spot. I think that's an outstanding feature. And um, I mean, I, I really like this terrain view uh, as well, because I mean, I just think the terrain view, you can assess important information without any interference. I mean, if we look at it, it's basic, it's simplified. Uh, you see minimal features. I think uh, it makes our life a lot easier. There's no colors or components, no competition. None of that's out there right at, at, at this point. Uh, just you know, simple dots and some symbols, and it, it makes it easy for an incident commander to do exactly what you just did, Brandon. Uh, look at this and position his people wherever uh, in route wherever they need wherever they need to go. The terrain view is a it's it's really I think a, a great feature of the Florian system. So we we have a comment here uh, from An uh, Al Evangelista. Uh, he says, I like the fact that this can be used uh, in a group setting to pre-plan a building and response. It's very hard, especially for volunteer departments, to simulate scenarios on scene with 20 to 30 firefighters in attendance. So I think that's a really good point, too, because he's saying is a pre-planning feature to be able to lay out a plan very similar to what we did just building this kind of mock incident. Yeah, I mean, Al is right on right on point with that. I mean, you know, we talk about this situational awareness or the size of thing, which I'm a big uh, I'm a big junkie about, of course. You know, uh, I mean, I was in class the other day, and we are asking a question about when size up begins, and someone said, "Well, it begins at the receipt of the alarm." And I said, well, all due respect, I, I think it begins well before the receipt of the alarm. I think it be begins with what Al just mentioned here on your pre-incident information and your pre-planning and getting a look at the building before you need to go there. Looking at the accessibility, the square footage, the height, the construction, the occupancy type. And I mean, you could be sitting in your office with the system and just punch up an address of a target hazard uh, and 
pre-plan it and dance around it, whether it's the aerial satellite view or the terrain view, uh, well before the receipt of the alarm. And to John's point, and I, and I know, Brandon, you mentioned this very well, I mean, when we go from satellite to terrain, I mean, it washes out all the color, which I think is what you really need at this point, because the satellite is great, uh, seeing the building, you know, with all the colors, the, you know, the trees, the surrounding properties, and, you know, as if it would be if you were standing there looking at it, you know, on a bright sunny day. But when you have apparatus coming in and, you know, when we start to talk about, you know, the different dots that we see here, I remember we were doing a lot of prep work and having a lot of consulting meetings, uh, you know, being from Jersey, uh, we were talking about, you know, the, the guys who are going to be purchasing this, purchasing this system or, you know, entertaining the system, they're going to want it color coding. They're going to want their engine companies to be probably black, their ladder companies to be red, their rescues to be blue, the chiefs will be yellow or gold. And when we played with that in the satellite view, uh, the colors kind of got washed into the different colors of you know, the building, the trees, the, you know, all the graphics that go with that. But as soon as we punched up the colors and the dots and the apparatus coming in on terrain, it was like, oh, my God, here they are. And then sending messages to them. I mean, oh, my God, that's another win-win. I mean, think about that. It eliminates a lot of unnecessary radio chatter if you have the, op uh, have the opportunity. But, again, if you, know, if, if you need to get on the radio, and you tell them to come into a certain part of the building from the B side or the C side or the D side or down, you know, Pelham Street or Plimpton Street, you know, they're going to see this because they're going to have this on their MDT or MCT as well. So, I mean, hearing it, seeing it, uh, putting, again, all this together is, I mean, I wish, I, I'm sure John was great, and I wish we had this 25 years ago. Uh, we, this was uh, something I, I would have wrapped my arms around if I had it back then. Thank God it's here now and it's going to, it's changing the fire service. There's no doubt about it. Everybody we talked to, everybody we showed the system to, and this is just the surface of the whole system, is uh, they're blown away and for obvious reasons. Yeah, so in terms of um, some of that praise, you know, you're sort of giving, these are just, uh, this is just the en route features too. That's kind of all we're focusing on today. Um, so it goes, it goes into a lot more depth um, operationally, especially on scene. So flooring, we like to describe as a tool for en route on scene. And also all of this information is recorded um, for playback. So for training purposes, uh, Al, as you said, just in terms of, of training purposes, one of the people that left a comment on the on the, the stream, this, is, this would be great for, for training, not only for pre-planning, but for training as well. Um, and let's see here. So Rich just uh, left a, as a rescue company commander, this feature is invaluable for scene size up. Rich Cooper says, uh, size up for technical rescue, especially rope rescue and water rescue scenarios as we try to grasp scope of the scene and the accessibility for operations. So that's, that's a really good point too, is just being able to understand the scope of something if you're dealing with rope rescue. Um, Either of you like to chat about that for a second and just answer, uh, you know, just talk about Rich's uh, contribution here. I see, I see you smiling, oh, on I mean, the Chief Writer. A, you know what, Rich? I got to tell you, Rich. Rich is the best. I worked with Rich for many years, and uh, I, I, he he bailed me out of plenty of situations uh, with his uh, knowledge and his his abilities. He, he's a hell of a fireman, and he's a great great officer go ahead no i was just correct. gonna jump on i was just gonna say yeah i was just gonna say to uh, rich's point it's kind of like again it goes into that situational awareness you're coming into an incident and you're seeing the obstacles and you're already visioning in your head and even talking to the members in the cab of the apparatus what your tool cache is going to be you know we're going to need a b c and d you know uh this is what it looks like and even the guys can look to the front of the vehicle that's on the MDT or the MCT, and they can see the same thing through the screen and even maybe make some additional suggestions well before they arrive. I mean, think about the value of that. My God, it's like it goes back to the anticipation thing, the size up thing. Uh, you know, you're, you're ready to go to work before you have to go to work. I mean, how much value is that? That's worth, that's uh, extremely valuable. Absolutely. I think we could segue segue into the building building intelligence feature at this point. Uh, it's the same type of uh, 
same type of thing going here for you. You, you have that information prior to your arrival and it can make all the difference in your decisions and, and uh, in your judgments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I know we didn't mention that yet, but this is a great part for that uh, segment for that right now at this at the moment, meaning like we have the ability to have your building intelligence or your CAD information or your pre-plan information pop up on the screen after you hit a certain button or icon, giving you specifics about the building that you're going into on. It's anything that's unique, maybe host stretches that are greater than 150 feet. You have to anticipate that. That could pop up on the screen. The height construction and occupancy type, in addition to seeing it, in, you know, the visual sides of that. Anything that may be, how about ambulatory and non-ambulatory people in an in occupied multiple dwelling or people that are on oxygen, that, that could pop up through building our BI. That could be part of the, you know, the building intelligence or information that you're going to need uh, to know before you get there. So, I mean, it's it's all information driven. It's all situational awareness driven. It's It, it could be as uh, useful as you want it to be, to be quite honest. So when we're talking about that, we it also brings up a uh, another point of our incident notes. So we also give incident notes when you first log in or respond or acknowledge a run. Um, and we also give you the ability to add remarks. So this is where you're going to see something like 911 caller notes. Um, you're going to see uh, possibly building uh, the SIDS, correct? That's kind of what we're talking about when we get into building intelligence. Uh, a lot of that information here, you can see how many uh, people are on scene, the location of it, um, obviously the address. So a lot of that would be here. Um, and just as an example, you know, if I were to add a remark here, um, in terms of dispatch, uh, the 911 caller notes, if they were to say, um, uh, you know, um, we'll say victim trapped in, in apartment five, Adam. Okay. So now uh, they'll save that, and that's actually going to be automated and come through the CAD. So you'll see, you see my name obviously up there. I'm the one who left that, but that would say dispatch, um, you know, f fire alarm, what have you, how, whatever that that verbiage is that you use in your department uh, to be able to convey some of these important things that you need to know when you're en route. So, uh, so that's that's our incident notes. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and drop that screen away. But it's it's obviously e very easy to recall, uh, and it's time stamped as well. We can see at 8:38 p.m. that was left. Um, another great question uh, from Al Evangelista here. If this was used to pre-plan, and I'm gonna humor you here, Al, because this isn't part of our en route features, but this is really sort of operationally. Uh, where Florian starts to shine with some of its automation. So uh, he says, if this were be used to pre-plan, is there a way to secure lines of delineation for occup occupancy, such as collapse zones and placement of apparatus, depending on size of finding? Um, so some of those features that we make available to you is uh, what we call our zones, okay? And uh, our areas. And that's actually in our tool tray. So here, if you see, say if there's a collapse zone and we want to know when at any point somebody crosses over this threshold, we can create an area. And this is actually a geofenced area, so you're going to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to say, you know, let's say the, the facade of that building is approximately 60 feet tall. So I want to go ahead and block out this area, and I want to be notified as soon as somebody crosses into that area. So we have, we can name the area, we can name that collapse. Okay, it's an operational zone, and we want to make a zone. I want a critical life alert um, or a warning, and also how often, how or how quickly do I want that to be thrown? So right here we have five minutes. If I change this to zero minutes, as soon as anybody crosses into that zone, well, you, you know, you're really just going to see it here uh, for yourself. We've got the ladder there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and as soon as I save this, let me collapse this. Uh, as soon as I save this, you're going to see a change take place. So see how we get this critical life alert that, that displays? As soon as I save that, now because they are within that collapse zone, we understand that uh, and we're able to address that accordingly. Uh, so I can get on end, uh, you know, ladder 36's butt and say, you know, you guys get out of there. You're, you're Obviously, we can't have you staged there. Uh, that's a concern. So I can go ahead and clear those as well. 
But that's that's what we call our zone feature, okay, or our area feature, and those annotations will stay put. So uh, and and all of this information syncs across all devices. So as soon as one chief um, goes, at, you know, makes that that zone, that geofenced area, and saves that, that's going to sync across every other commander device, okay. And the same is here. I can go ahead and I can change these if I want. I can change the color of it. I can even change the timer and save that. I'm going to go ahead and um, actually I'll just keep it up there. It's not a big deal. Um, but that is, again, getting a little bit past into the on-scene features. But I really wanted to humor you because I appreciate your um, I appreciate your interaction for today. You had a couple good, a couple good points and a, and a, few, a few good questions. So I appreciate that, Al. Hopefully that does answer your question. Um, Mike Hopko, the hawk is in here. We got the hawk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Always appreciate seeing him in these uh, these demos. Um, Rich Cooper, we often need anchor points on roof and cannot see the roof from street. My guys look uh, en route uh, to the incident. So, once again, another really, um, really great point being made here in terms of the satellite view. Uh, and understanding the roof, maybe understanding the pitch. So, uh, anyone want to talk about that? See, need anchor points on the roof. Cannot see the roof from street. So, uh, either chief, would you like to address that? Well, I mean, I mean, to Rich's point, whether it's an anchor point or it's a shared light and air shaft, or it's the you know the location of the bulkhead in relationship to the, the square footage of the building or the solar panels, John talked about before. It's it, it's areas that we that we normally don't see or can't see from the street. I mean, it's you know as a as a former chief, I wanted to get pictures on all sides of the building, most normally the back of the building. I was always a big advocate on getting eyes in the back because uh, you know many times if it looked bad in the front, uh, it was probably ten times worse in the rear. So it, whether it's the rear of the building, the sides of the building, or at the richest point, the roof of the building for whatever task you're going to have as an anchor point for a rope. A rescue or you know for the ladder company on the bulkhead skylight the enclosed or open light and air shaft it's again it's eyes everywhere how's that sound eyes everywhere this what this what flooring does i like it i gotta I like do it. is move them yeah yeah really so um let's see here so let's continue on because i know we just addressed the zones um Another very easy, uh, simple feature we're not going to spend too much time on, but it's also turn by turn. Um, so me, as myself, as I'm logged in here, now everybody knows what turn by turn in is. It's Waze, it's Google Maps, um, you know, it's Bing Maps. It's the ability, obviously, to plan out a route ahead. Um, so, you know, as, as firemen, you know the majority of your district, you know the majority of your area. Um, but when can this be useful? When's a when's a time that maybe something like this might be useful? So how do how do we find our street view within flooring? I'm sorry, our our turn by turn within flooring. We'll go back to our operational view, um, which is our terrain view. And in the bottom right hand corner, we have this uh, sort of looks like a street sign it says "Get Directions." So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Okay. And uh, it's going to start giving me a list right away. It's going to tell me. Now, it's telling me because I'm logged in. It's going to give me directions all the way from Buffalo. So you can see in the top right-hand corner, we've got 6 hours and 24 minutes, 42 seconds. I can also give myself a line-by-line -line or a, you know, a verbal uh, sort of, I'm sorry, like a visual list of directions. Um, I'm going to take this 286 miles down 90 towards Boston. Mass turnpike, obviously. Uh, but what's an instance where maybe this might be useful, Chiefs, uh, turn by turn? I know we talked one time with something about, you know, some maybe some of the younger guys in the department that are just uh, coming up and, and driving the apparatus. Well, I can, give, I can give you a bunch. John, why don't you start off with this one? As I, well, I know I can, I can add to it, I'm sure. But go ahead. Okay, you know, I just look at it, this turn by turn thing, you know, what – the first thing you would think of is that it's about the speed, all right? But you could also argue that and say it's not about the speed as much as it's about the accuracy. Florian can eliminate or can't, cannot eliminate traffic and congestion, all right? But it can eliminate indecision and uncertainty. 
So knowing you're on the correct route to an incident means you can concentrate on that, on your driving. And if you can concentrate on your driving, what do you get? You get a safer response. And if you know ahead of time that you're going to have to go 10 blocks because you look down at it and you saw the block by block visual, uh, visualization of the, of the incident, you can concentrate on your driving. And yes, that will relate to getting you there a little bit quicker because you know ahead of time that you don't have to be hitting the brake, you know, as you come up on every block, whether you're going to make the turn or not. And what I really like about that view that you have on the screen there right now, yes, it shows you that way, but it also allows somebody with experience in that neighborhood to circumvent or go another way. You could see there's other options there that could be available to you in the event of uh, traffic conditions or some type of road condition. So, uh, I mean, the turn by turn, it's an outstanding feature. Yeah, and I'll jump on that. You know what it is? This gives you known when it's unknown. And what do I mean by that? This could be in a, a suburban or rural setting. You're asked to come in as a mutual aid company, maybe just to relocate to a firehouse. Well, where the heck is that firehouse? We've never been there. Or you're asked to come in as a mutual aid company and you're going to the fire scene, and how do we get there? You type that in. I can remember operating years ago and going in as a fourth alarm engine and to another remote part of the city, and how do we get there? You know, it, so it, it has a place, regardless of where you're from and who you are, and, you know, how do we get there? And this, if you ask that question, this will get you there, you know, as simple as that sounds. Well, and you know, we all know, uh, you know, experience comes with time. And uh, some of these younger guys that are entering the department, they may they may not know their the the you know the area as well. And uh, you know sometimes these guys are our drivers, and uh, they're used to kind of looking down at their phone anyways, and having these things kind of laid out for them. So you know it isn't not everybody obviously is going to utilize something like this, but uh, you know it's something that's there, and I think I think it does become valuable as you said in order to save time. You know, there's no doubt in your mind when you open this up what the correct route is, right? And uh, uh, sometimes doubt can lead to seconds, you know, taking a, taking a few extra seconds to get there, and seconds matter. So um, so I appreciate that. So, uh, you know, and obviously it's turn by turn, very, very simple. We just we like to show you how it operates uh, and, and not spend too much time on it because, you know, most people, when we were visiting departments, some guys were pulling this up on their cell phone, you know, and they had to use that extra screen in order to be able to find something like this. So we thought it'd be nice uh, uh, to kind of uh, provide a, a tool so that that wasn't even needed to be an option anymore, uh, pulling up the uh, pulling up the, uh, the the cell phone. So I'm going to exit out of navigation now, and it's just as simple as that. You click the, uh, the street sign in the bottom right-hand corner to pull it up. And uh, and and then you click exit to get out of it. So uh, you want to use it? You can. Don't want to use it? No. You know, a lot of these things with Florian. Hey, Brandon. Did. Sure. Go ahead, Chief. Brandon, the the you know, I don't know if you remember the uh, safety officer uh, for the Boston Fire Department said this was his favorite feature mm -hmm. because he literally responded to every um, every working fire in the city of Boston, and he says, uh, you know, even though he's been on the job for twenty years. You can't possibly remember all the streets and all the turns. Uh, he was all over this. He, he absolutely loved this feature. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Al, Al Evangelista with another great contribution. He says, uh, New Jersey's traffic diversion plan for Interstate 287, it directs traffic into and through our town on two major arteries. He says, uh, this can be an asset when the highway's diverted. Give us a heads up for alternate routes. Because the thing too, it also does take traffic into account, which is which is really valuable. So, um, just a quick shout out, uh, Scott Khan. Thanks for liking the page. Angelo McKnight, thanks for stopping. And I assume both of you guys were watching uh, the the stream tonight. Thanks for following along, Florian. Um, and once again, if you like what you see, make sure to follow the Facebook. Um, go ahead and like the stream. We appreciate any shares that we can get to get the word out here. Uh, so, uh, really appreciate that, Angelo and Scott. Um, let's see here. So 
Matt, let's see here. Uh, Matt Bartlett had a question uh, a few minutes ago. He says, what about when a call is received as a fire in the area of, quote and unquote, he says, uh, or fire reported at, you know, Main Street and First Street. He says, is dispatch able to push, uh, push a new address or a chief able to adjust the address on arrival to show the actual incident? Um, so what we have is we have a we integrate with a two-way CAD system. Um, so if the CAD is able to update that, we will be able to ingest that. Um, now, I know that it can get a little bit tricky because the state of the, or I, I should say the location of the incident is sort of marked and set in stone. But utilizing some of Florian's other features, such as the send address, Who's to say that this doesn't start off as, uh, you know, a fire on the corner of Monsignor uh, Reynolds Way and Washington Street? And then the chief is able to go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to send you guys. Uh, this is the actual address. OK, so you're able to some of these tools. We know that firefighters are, are resourceful people. Um, you know, the average civilian looks at a hammer in a single way and says, oh, I can pound nails with this thing. A firefighter is going to find seven different ways to use that uh, that hammer. So we try to we try to. That's why we don't try to preach too much about hey, do this and do that. We, we try to give you some tools and we let firefighters be resourceful. Um, so so you know, using that send feature might be a way to sort of jump over some of those hurdles because I don't really know how the current CAD systems uh, tackle that in terms of updating an address. Um, other than sort of verbally or visually implying that. But uh, that send feature might be something uh, that you might want to utilize in terms of that. So I appreciate that, Matt. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks for that contribution. Uh, yeah, Matt makes, Matt, makes a great, Matt makes a great point, Brandon. Uh, that, this happens numerous times. You get fire report in the area of or fire report across the street. A lot of times we get multiple addresses. And obviously the dispatchers, and they do a great job, of course, you know, they, they, they give a, maybe a corner, you know, report of, of, of Ocean and Dwight or something along that line. And at least we start moving in that direction. And it, as to your point, it also depends on the CAD. Now if they get a more definitive address like 468 Ocean, they can type that into the CAD and hopefully the CAD can update. And when it does, it sends the information to Florian, and now we can actually get now more intel on 468 Ocean as compared to maybe a corner of Ocean and Dwight. So, again, I think that's going to come down to the CAD system. And if their CAD can do it, uh, Florian will definitely accept that and update the system, update the mapping, update all the intel on the way in. Yeah, it's a good way, good way to put it. You know, if the CAD can do it, so can we. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're just about rounding out here on an hour now. Um, I have one final feature I want to speak of, um, but also kind of want to introduce a bonus feature. So because I know that we touched on area before, areas or zones, okay, and some of the automation that comes with that. Um, and what I'd like to show here is actually uh, I'm going to go full screen on flooring here. So in our tool tray, um, we have the area option, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and say that we had this entire area of uh, uh, between Columbus and Hunting, Huntington. The, say there was an incident, something's happening here um, just within these two blocks, okay? And we wanna call some sort of an evacuation. Let's say maybe it's a hazmat, um, you know, or, or some sort of a, you know, an incident that's quickly escalating. Well, we can go ahead and we can create an area and we can name that evac. And this is a this is a really big feature. This is something we're 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 proud of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this because I don't I'm not really concerned with any of the throws, so I'm gonna leave that as none and I'm gonna save that. Well now we have this evac feature. And if you look, when I open this up, okay, we have the ability to click here and evacuate. And now we can alert civilians. So what we utilize is it's the Amber Alert system, which is also called the iPaws system. So uh, we can alert uh, civilians to either evacuate or shelter in place. Um, so that is a really, um, you know, if, if either chief wants to touch on this at any point, just go ahead and interrupt me. But that all in and of itself is a really um, powerful feature for a incident commander to have right in their hands uh, because it just cuts out time, you know, as I understand it, on chain of command 
Um, and, and sometimes we we call an evac, and it's you know, 15, 20 minutes for that to get out. Right here, utilizing the iPaw system, this is sent directly to um, civilian cell phones, and they get that notification, that emergency notification right on there. So if anybody wants to expand upon this a little bit. Well, Brandon, what I what I like about this, uh, of course, it's the the speed is the great feature. But what I what I really like is that you can tell these people in that zone, you can give them a precise plan of action to follow. You can tell them, you know, evacuate to the north. You know, everybody go down Main Street, or type of thing. Or you can have them say, listen, just stay in in your building and close all your windows. Uh, you can you can tell them exactly what you want them to do, so there's no misinterpretation or misunderstanding. Absolutely, yeah, it's a pretty powerful feature, um, and it's something we're really we're really proud of too. Because to be able to hook in with DHS and have the ability and access to that IAPAUSE system, um, that's it's just a game changer for a lot of incident commanders. Again, something that's not needed all the time, but when you do need it, it's there in an instant. Um, so anything else to add to that, Chief Turpak, before we uh, before we move on to uh, our last feature? Oh, yeah, this has multiple uh, uh, multiple options available to the commander. One is, like, I, as you guys mentioned, it has a material incident, and you can get, send out an alert, like a reverse 911 or the Amber, or obviously our ability to work with DHS here to say evacuation or stay in place. But I know we've talked about this in a few uh, meetings before how we're going to be able to probably work this into even working into a high-rise building meaning when we have a fire in a high-rise maybe alerting people within the building to shelter in place especially in a residential high-rise which is always a big problem people getting out of their apartments and getting into smoke-filled staircases and hallways when obviously their best place would be to stay in their apartment and when we are able to do that I mean think about the value of that outside of a hazmat all right now we're talking about a building of height and how we can get messages to building people within the building to say, listen, you people on certain floors need to evacuate. You people from these floors to these floors stay in place. I mean, this has endless opportunities on different levels, different type of incidents. This to me is a, I know I said it before, but this is a game changer. And you know, me, I'm a high rise buff and, I mean, again, outside of being able to talk to people face to face or have a public address system in the building, think about how many people you could touch in a building of height right away with this system. Stay where you are and wait for further instructions. Wow. I mean, really, wow. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so closing up on on sort of the the areas feature again, another really great contribution from Al here. Um, so he asks the question, he says, as an emergency management director in my community, we have a floodplain approximately one third the size of our town. OK, can this program track emergency personnel within the zone, for example, teams of two firefighters or cert team members? Um, so that goes back into this area. So what we can do is let's repurpose this. Actually, uh, I'm going to go full screen with Florian again and hide our cameras. Um, but let's repurpose this area and say, um, you know, maybe we want to name this the floodplain. Uh, utilizing some of the more on scene or um, operational features of flooring. Again, most of this is really just en route that we're talking about. Utilizing some of those on scene features, uh, we can create this as a floodplain. Change this maybe if we want to get want to get cute. Uh, change it to blue. Um, and then when somebody crosses through that zone, you can also set that. So actually, let's do this. Let's change our throw to a notice, okay? Because we don't want, it's not a critical alert, okay? We don't want it, that to explode out right away, but we want to understand when somebody crosses through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move uh, our ladder here inside the zone, okay? And now what you're going to see is uh, not only do we get that pathing feature, but I think I put a timer on that okay so five minutes what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this down to zero i'm going to save that and now we see so we get this alert now what happens is this is passive so you can understand that they're within that okay uh they're within that flood plane okay but it's not going to ex it's not going to grab your attention right away 
So say that that's why we call this passive. If you want to ex expand out, say we have two different zones here. Let me just make one more area here, okay? And say we want to understand when somebody's in there. We're going to make that again zero, and we're going to make this a passive notice, okay? And I'll just call that plane two, okay? So we can organize, we can essentially organize our teams here by understanding uh, exactly where they are. So I'm gonna actually, I want to go send this person here. I'm gonna physically move them. And I'm gonna lock that into place. Now we can see, okay, we've got somebody in, in the floodplain and then plane two. Again, terminology, I'm really just giving these for the sake of time, I'm giving these, uh, these sort of, uh, um, you know, generic terms. Uh, using some generic terminology, but that is how zones can play out and utilize some of that automation. Now you're going to see if I go ahead and move this, move this, uh, this firefighter just outside the zone and save it, that goes away. So when we utilize the full operational uh, or on scene capabilities of flooring, what we do is we pair your firefighter uh, with a um, rugged cell phone, okay, so that they have GPS coordinates. And we use Sonam rugged cell phones. I don't want to get too much into the on scene because uh, uh, I know the chiefs here. I don't, I don't want to take up too much, uh, too much more of their time. And we still want to go, touch on scribbles. But it's a really good question, Al. Um, so hopefully I, I was able to answer that for you. But we we pair your firefighters with rugged cell phones, so we pull the GPS data from that. So as soon as that GPS dot crosses over, okay. Um, let me just bring up the cameras here. As soon as that GPS dot crosses over that uh, geofenced area, that notification is going to change or that status is going to change. So you can, again, it's just another tool. However you want to be creative with that or resourceful with that uh, is really up to you. But thanks for that. Thanks for that contribution again, Al. Uh, you know, and Al, let me just, at this point, you've had so much interaction. Uh, let me say that if you have any interest in maybe a virtual demonstration of the on scene and the playback features of Florian. Uh, you know, I'll make myself available at any time to go ahead and, and give you a personal walkthrough of that. So I appreciate that, Al. And and Chief Riker, you want to say something? Well yeah, you know, to Al's point, you know, Al is a is the uh, OEM coordinator uh, for his community. So he's responsible for a hell of a lot of people, you know, at these major events. Just so he knows, he can set up a zone where he can have his staging area or all his workers. And then he can set up another zone where when those people cross over into that, he can see where they are and that they're working at that time being in that zone. And then when they're done, he can watch them go to another zone, perhaps rehab and and, and, and rehabilitation type thing. So... He can watch over his entire group every step of the way from the time they arrive on scene, go to work, and then rehab themselves uh, later on and are dismissed from the incident. Al, you can watch them all. Exactly. So, uh, And Matt makes another great point here, too. Matt Bartlett says, uh, perfect feature for hot, warm, and cold zones for hazmat incidents. Uh, accountability that members are where they do and don't belong, where they do and do not belong. So uh, really great point there, Matt. Appreciate that as well. Um, but, you know, so to wrap up with this, uh, let's talk about our final our final uh, uh, feature here on flooring, which is our, for en route is scribbles, okay? So uh, Chief Riker, I know me and you have given many a presentation in regards to the scribbles feature. How do you best describe what scribbles are? Okay, I love it. To me, Scribbles gives you the visual ability to enhance a verbal command. In other words, is that picture worth a thousand words? Yes, it is. <laughs> you can you can scribble. You you can write on the map. X marks the spot. This is where <laughs> I want you. Now there is no confusion. Right. That is definitely the details are clear and defined. And you know the intended gold. There's no get. There's no misinterpretation. You can't beat that scribble feature. So something like for scribbles, as he says, to back up a verbal um, command or an audible command. Uh, so if I go ahead and open up here, obviously in our tool tray, one of the other actions is a scribble. So I'm going to go ahead and center my camera here and just show you how quickly this can happen. Um, 
Let's say we want to mark out the uh, the sides of the structure. Okay, I can come here, and I can give myself uh, a alpha bravo charlie delta. Oops. Let me, let me so look at you can erase as well. Look at how nice that is. But delta. Now we can go ahead and name this. You know, sides. Save it, and look at that. It sticks directly to the map. Uh, so like he said, a quick way to back up a verbal command, okay? So now we have this visual reference here. There's no confusion. We know what the, the proper sides of the building are. Uh, one of the things I liked, um, and both you chiefs, I'll give you a second to comment on this, but when we were in Boston uh, and we were starting with their integration, we were, we, we were um, you know, launching flooring within the Boston Fire Department. One of the, one of the chiefs says, so wait, I can, I can use this scribble feature uh, and let's say uh, I want to go ahead and, and I want to talk about the the, wet, the wind direction. So yeah, go ahead. You can make an arrow there and you can say 10 miles per hour, okay? So now your entire department, and let's just say wind, save that as wind, okay? For those of you that can't see, within here I'm just naming this here on the left-hand side and then I'm going to go ahead and save it. That sticks to the map as well. So look at how useful that is. Now every firefighter understands maybe the direction of the wind. So things like, this isn't just for structure fire, for wildfire, wildland, okay? This might have, um, you know, so there's a lot of different uses. Again, it's just a tool that uh, we allow firefighters to go ahead and get resourceful with. So anything in regards to scribbles uh, maybe that we want to want to cover, Chiefs? Well, you're making a great point here. See, uh, we're, I don't want to say we're spoiled, but you know, we're used to working in an urban environment. But I remember when we were first, when the guys, the engineers first introduced scribbles and they were showing it to a bunch of guys and gals from the wildland firefighting industry, yeah, yeah. you know, your West Coast people, all the way up into the East Coast people as well. They loved the scribbles. I mean, I, the comments were you know, mind blowing. You know, wow, I could pretty much draw a fire line here. I could circle where we're going to draft water from, from here. The wind speed and direction, they can make notes on the map and then everybody sees it. I think that has a great place. Yeah, and the, and the urban environment, but the wildland people loved scribbles for obvious reasons. I mean, think about how vast and wide open the terrain is and try to focus on a map that covers, you know, a couple hundred square miles. Now, they could pretty much draw a circle around something and you know say this is the pitch, this is the where we're going to be concerned about wind speed direction. They can even make little notes in the corner on what the current humidity is. You know, uh, it has a place uh, for everybody. Wildland people seem to really enjoy scribbles. Quite, I mean, they were really very boisterous about it. So uh, I remember uh, Chief Danny Sheridan, who's who's another one of our, our colleagues here and, and helps out a lot with Florian. Uh, he was in Boston. He was he was saying, "Why don't well, just use the map? Use the map as a notepad." Okay, got my primary search, my secondary search. Uh, I can go ahead and, and save those. Say searches, and then as they're done, I can essentially create sort of a, a checklist. Let me go back. And uh, edit that, and, and just cross those out. And say, okay, this one's done. Uh, this search done. This search done. It, it's it's just that easy uh, to be able to use the map essentially as your own notepad, and any commander can do that. And this is going to sync across all devices as well. So once again, that's the the power of cloud computing. Um, is that any chief that looks or pulls this up, or really anybody with this Windows client, this Windows based client. So once again, the MCT, they're going to see the sides of the building. They're going to see the direction of the wind, the speed of the wind. So it's really, really powerful stuff. So uh, anything in closing, Chiefs, that you guys would like to comment on? Uh, before we wrap this thing up, I want to just say thanks very much for your time. We really, really appreciate it. I want to say thanks to everybody um, who, who contributed. Al, uh, the Hawk, Matt. We had some uh, other folks up here. Rich McCory, appreciate all of your contributions today. Um, uh, anything in closing here, Chiefs, that we'd like to we'd like to say? Um, if I could just say one thing, and this is just the the beginning of many features of the system. And one thing we did have the opportunity to mention, and in the in route, and because I know a lot of Chiefs and are probably saying this themselves, 
you know, when they're riding into an incident, I can't be, you know, touching a screen or looking at a screen because maybe they're by themselves. They don't have a driver and are at eight. But maybe we could just mention briefly, Brandon, and how you can give some voice dictation to Florian and it could show you terrain view, it could show you satellite view, uh, just to quell that anxiety about this, that this thing is pretty much hands free when you were in the in route feature. So it's just the ability to say something and the screen will give it to you and you can glance at it as, you know, as you're driving, like you're, again, if you're by yourself, if you have an aid, that's different. You can touch the screen. You could do things with the screen. If you're a company officer, again, you could touch the screen, but for the chiefs out there who don't have the luxury of having a driver or a chief's aid, uh, we, we thought about that too. A couple words from you to the computer screen as you're making your turns left and right, you're heading to the incident and the screen's going to give you what you ask for verbally. So that's important for the guys and gals to know in the in route feature too. Yeah. So, so voice commands as well. We do have yeah. that just like Google, just like Alexa, you know, if you say uh, your wake word, Hey Google. So I I'm going to be cautious here for a second chief, just because uh, my microphone is being used by the program that we're using to record right now. So I don't know if it's going to, capture that and see it but we'll give it a try here so i just turned on our speech recognition um and let's see here so florian show satellite there you go so it is it is picking it up so that's great so see we also give you voice commands as well which is another powerful feature uh so very very similarly to what uh, chief turpak was just saying in terms of uh you know not every department's graced with a chauffeur right <laughs> So how do how do we how are we able to maybe see multiple different views of Florian? Um, those incident details, Florian, show details. So we can pull that up now. Again, we can see victim trapped in apartment five, Adam. Now this is again this is something that is used uh, across all of the MCTs. So if you have access to an MCT or any Windows based device or tablet. Uh, our Android tablet, we actually can utilize uh, these features and use the mic. So, Florian, hide details. Florian, show terrain. Florian, show street view. See, that pulls up. Florian, hide street view. Oh, Florian, hide street view. There we go. So you get the little chime as well. Uh, and I see Chief Riker smiling over there because he's uh, it's it's working as it should, you know. So a lot of times in software, hey, uh, when you see these things take place in over years and months and years, and you see how it grows and you see how it adapts, and then, you know, you get the final product as it is here today, it gives you a, a sense of pride. <laughs> Hey, Brandon, since since you're in the uh, in this view and we are in Boston, is there any chance we can pop their uh, put up the hydrants? Uh, you know what? So for purposes of this demo, um, I am not in the proper. That's in Boston's like production. OK, so they okay. have it in I their real life environment. We don't mess around in that because obviously, you know, they're using it day to day and I can't go in there. So. Uh, for purposes of this demo, um, and that's another thing, we, we didn't really discuss the hydrants just because in this moment um, we don't have the data pulled into this actual client, which is our own back end. So it, we're going to work on that. We're actually in talks with uh, the city of Buffalo right now uh, to do a potential uh, pilot with them. Um, so when we do get that the hydrant data, so that's a Esri map layer. When we do get that data, we'll pull that in. We'll be able to we'll be able to work that in with uh, with some of our demonstrations. So, but I, I appreciate you bringing that up, Riker, because that is a big feature too. Is being able to you know locate your hydrants or what is an in or out of service hydrant when you're in route as well. So, um, but other than that, Chiefs, I just want to say thanks again very much uh, for your time. We really appreciate it here. Uh, thanks to everybody that had interacted and asked some questions. Oh, the Hawk says, time to do a real-time li real live drill to show all these features. Hey, we'll do it, and you know what? I'll, I'll make it live, too, so we can see. We'll do a, we'll do a sort of a, um, an OPEX 
and uh, and I'll bring the camera out, and we'll get everything going live for you, Hawk. So um, we're excited to do those. We love doing them in person too because you know a lot of the uh, the fire service is able to get hands on then, and the chiefs really get to see. Uh, you know, it's cool to see their their gears turning uh, with some of these features. So um, other than that, uh, once again, thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. Appreciate it. I uh, want to say goodbye. Good night to the folks at home, sitting comfy in their homes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Florian is the future of the fire service. Get ready. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, again, thank you as as well guys and gals for joining looking forward to the next webinar when we show you once we get on the scene how Florian moves forward as well so Brandon thanks for hosting and uh, John thanks for being part of it as well uh, see everybody soon thanks all Thank right you. take care Good everybody night. out there and stay safe